Matthew Stillman, and I write at stillmansays.com, and I'm here to talk today about habitual nose. So, some time ago, a wonderful woman by the name of Meg Warden came over to my house from Portland, Oregon, and I offered to make her dinner, and I made her um, a little delicious dish of raw lamb and rose water and olive oil and mint and what else was in it? Oh, and chopped apricots. And she sat down and ate it and thought it was delicious. Not too long ago, a friend of mine by the name of Carolina uh, gave me a bag of really expensive coffee. The sort of coffee that, you know, if it was wine would be, you know, $250 from one particular plot of one particular area of the um, best coffee growing fields in Colombia, where she's from. What's remarkable about these two experiences is that Meg is a vegetarian. And she decided on that day that she just was going to say yes to being served something that was offered to her. And in saying that, she had this opportunity to connect this lovely eating experience. With the coffee that was given to me, it was remarkable that I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't really drink it. Um, wasn't raised with it. Doesn't really interest me. And my first inclination, the moment I got that gift was to say, I don't drink coffee, but thank you so much. But I didn't, and I thought, what can I do about this? And so I want to use Meg as a jumping off point, because Meg is an incredible person. If you don't know her, you should. Meg Warden, a fantastic human being, wonderful health coach, uh, and really just open to the possibilities of not saying a habitual no. It's so easy to have the stance of, I don't do this thing, therefore I'll never do it. And this sort of creates this slipstream of just the way things are. I don't eat meat, I don't date people with blonde hair, or I need to have X, Y, or Z in a particular way. And it closes off possibilities. Not to say that you should always say yes to everything, but having a habitual note that the default response is no, 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 uh, closes off possibilities. And so I think one in their life can be more like Meg Warden and just be open to not being so close-minded and didactic and find ways of discovering yes. Meg did and had a great lamb dish. So with the coffee, what was interesting for me was that because I don't drink coffee, I don't have a coffee grinder, I don't have a filter, but I thought, how can I say yes to this very generous gift? And so I did have a mortar and pestle, and so I actually would take this mortar and pestle and you know, physically grind the beans in a little iron thing, and I would made my own strainer, uh, or filter, not a strainer, shows you how much I drink coffee, and I ended up having a really wonderful experience with it. Feeling the lightness of the beans, seeing the color of the beans as they shone in the little mortar and pestle. Seeing how they became duller as I ground them. Feeling the, the movement of the mortar and pestle, or the pestle and the mortar, um, going from sort of chunky to smooth. Smelling the the waft of the beautiful scent of coffee, and if only could coffee could taste just like it smells well, maybe I'd drink it. But the whole thing was a real tactile experience where I had to use all my senses, and I had sort of like this meditative experience with just enjoying every sense involved with doing this process, which was so outside of my habitual way of eating things in the morning or drinking things in the morning or any time really. And so while I really doubt that I'm going to end up getting a new 
bag of coffee and become a coffee drinker. I was delighted that my friend Carolina gave me this gift, which I didn't know anything about. And again, I was delighted that Meg and I could have a way to connect over something that she didn't habitually eat. So I'd really encourage you to find ways of eliminating your habitual no. Wherever that happens to be, open up the door and see what I can possibly say yes to. And if that's true, then what happens? You can always say no later. You can always say no to start. What do I care? But it's interesting to see uh, how we can be closed off. The Grand Canyon is made by the Colorado River, making the same path again and again and again and again and again and again for millions of years. And you have this absolutely beautiful temple of the that shows the the work of the Colorado River. But the Colorado River if it's going to change course, it will take a very long time. It'll take a collapse of part of the, of the Grand Canyon. It may take heavier flows of water. Who knows? Any number of things. But we create beautiful testaments to our single-mindedness with our habitual no's and our habitual yeses, for that matter. But opening up new possibilities of not habitually saying no, not habitually saying yes, allows our inner waters, so to speak, to move freely and not be locked in. So I hope you guys reflect on that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on where your habitual no's are and where your habitual yeses are and just what's happened and what you can perhaps bring into experiencing just in the moment and see what happens there. Thanks so much. Please stop by Stillman Says to read some of the stories that I share from Union Square in New York City. And if you don't know Meg Warden, Meg Warden, W-O-R-D-E-N dot com. She is great. Thanks again. Hope you're well and talk to you soon.